Okay, we're going to start with a smaller style um, intruder fly tied on a little bullet tube. At the rear end of that bullet tube, I'm going to tie on a little piece of uh, junction tubing. Put my mandrel through that tube and through the junction tubing. This is a uh, specific tube fly uh, tying vise. Um, a small mandrel through the, the length of the entire tube. That tube could be a half an inch long, it could be three inches long for that matter. Uh, numerous different kinds of tubes. This, like I say, ha happens to be uh, what we call a, a bullet tube, just slightly bullet shaped at the head. And you'll see the, uh, the reason for all of that here uh, as we get this fly sort of underway. I'll just tie that piece of junction tubing on to the tube itself. I also am a fan of glue. You'll see me glue during a lot of different steps of this fly. And we'll start with the butt end of this fly, which I call a target. I tie pretty much all my steelhead flies with a target at the rear end of the fly. The target I like to use most is a imitation seal dubbing. It looks like a little egg at the back of your fly. You could use the imitation seal dubbing. It's just more lively. Make a small dubbing loop. Spread out that dubbing in there. Give it a few twists. You can see my dubbing loop tool is just homemade. Just a coat hanger bent to shape. Pretty effective and very inexpensive. And just a little ball of dubbing back there is all I'm looking for. Again, in the end, you'll see that it's just a target for those fish coming up behind my fly to find. Just a little dab of glue, even on one side of the of the tube is fine. It'll end up getting wrapped around the tube once you make a couple of wraps. Just a few really sparse pieces of uh, kid goat hair here or polar bear substitute. I'm going to tie it in in just about three different places around the tube just to give it a little effect. Very sparse. You'll see that the flies I tie are quite sparse in nature. Makes them very easy to cast. I'm looking for a big, a big silhouette with very, very little material. There's literally maybe eight, nine, ten fibers in there that I'm going to tie in. And again, maybe two or three different spots. I'll, I'll probably use three spots on this particular diameter tube. There's two of them. I'll get one more. You can use a comb if you need it. Get a little of that dubbing out of the bottom. Looking a little triangular right now, but again, that will that'll go away in time here. Uh, next bit of material is going to be some uh, rhea feather. This is stripped rhea. I probably won't use all of that, uh, but I'm going to palmer it on here and just kind of uh, palmer it on to, to de de desired effect here. Get sort of the shaft of that feather tied in, and now I'll come around and get the front of the feather tied in. That bound up quite well. Get my thread up, up the shank of my tube a ways to where I feel like I'm going to probably stop 
polymering my rhea so that it's in place to tie it down once I finish this polymering job here. Don't worry about manhandling your materials. I think I worked as a fly tire for a long time being so cautious about my materials. Some of them are quite expensive. And a friend of mine encouraged me one day to just get in there and manhandle my materials so that I get to so that I get them where that where I want them. And that improved my tying immensely. Notice how I'm I've just got three fingers around the shank of that tube, pulled all my materials back, get it tied in exactly like I'd like, trim the excess. And if that's too flared for your liking, again, you can pull back with your fingers, tie back on it slightly. If that's still too flared for your liking, you can get some saliva on your fingers, pull it back even more. In the end, I will end up shaping my fly uh, more to my liking for right now. I'm, I'm okay with that amount of flare. Uh, next piece of material here, I'm just going to put a little bit of flash in here. Not a lot. Uh, same friend that coached me on manhandling my materials, coached me on, on, uh, on not a lot of flash in your steelhead flies. Yeah, he hated flies with a lot of flash in them, and he was definitely a, probably a mentor of mine in fly tying. And I have three strands of crystal flash there. Literally, that's it, three strands. You'll be amazed how, how much that ends up looking like in the end. So three strands in, laid flat. So it'll be whatever, three, th three strands on the bottom, three strands on the top by the time I pull it around. Um, next will be just some, uh, an Amherst uh, feather, again, stripped. I dial my own feathers. This is a pretty rich purple color. Same method of getting this tied in as I, as I did tying in my rhea feather, just the very end of the feather, get it secured, maybe a little glue if you like. The bulk of the, bulk of the work in these flies is preparing your materials. I've gotten to where I can get a fly tied relatively quickly now, but Material preparation takes quite a bit of time. And the, again, the palmering of this feather can basically end wherever you like. I like my flies relatively sparse. That's going to be enough for me. These stems are thick, and if you don't get a good bind on them, they're going to want to come undone. That one's going to stay there just fine now. Again, kind of manhandle that material back, make sure that it's tied in good and tight before I move on. Trimming it nice and tight is important as well. Otherwise, you'll get some stem that'll want to stick out of there, which I got a little bit. I'm just going to cover it with some thread. Another trick you can use, if you like, if you've got a little bit of stem there, which is, you can see how white that is. I just use a little marker. Turn it black. All just tricks. And we're just going to put a little collar on here, some mallard flank. 
strip one side of the of the stem completely. And I'll just take the bottom of that feather off on on the other side as well because we won't need that. This is a little tricky getting to the very, very top of this feather. You know, just a few strands out here, but I like to get to the very top so you don't have one clump of fibers. That's going to be okay, I think, if I can get that tied in. I can sort of adjust it with my thread here in a second. You'll see what I'll tie it in lightly and then I'll just pull it. There we go. And again, manhandle that. Get it tied in right at the base of your previous step so that when you begin to palmer, it's going to show up as just a really nice collar here. Splay those fibers out by hand a little bit if they don't want to do it for you. It's ugly right now, but I can probably fix most of that with that same method of Pulling all those materials back. This is going to be a larger and longer head than I really like, but a fly that will fish just fine. You can see that my vise is a rotary, which is pretty key for this kind of tying. This style of tying is called tying in the round, where basically the fly doesn't have a top or a bottom. It's just meant to fish. Uh, uh, this is pretty pretty specific steelhead fly, although I know it would catch trout just fine, but this is a Pacific Northwest sort of style fly um, fished from basically from probably Northern California all the way up through BC and, and, uh, and into Alaska. Fall style, uh, uh, fall style swinging it through the current. You're typically casting straight across, uh, uh, straight across the river, 90 degrees from 90 to, to, to 45, somewhere in there, and then they're swinging this fly through the current um, until what we until you reach this point uh, that we call the hang down. Basically, the fly being straight downstream from you, and uh, And hopefully a fish has taken it before it's gotten there. Uh, this fly was developed by the core group of uh, steelhead fishermen up and down the Pacific coast. It was a pretty secretive fly, I suppose, for a lot of years. Um, in the end, it really isn't rocket science. This fly, it's about as close to a woolly bugger, I guess, as you could could really get. Um, but it got a lot of attention as a as a steelhead specific fly. Some people love to have that crystal flash hanging out the end of their uh, the end of their fly a little bit. I ended up I end up trimming my crystal flash crystal flash to uh, uh, to about equal the length of the rest of the materials on my fly, just because I think it looks nicer. But there are, there's a school of thought out there that says your crystal flash should hang out a half an inch or an inch um, just to get the attention of the fish. There you can see the target of the fly. See that ball of dubbing in there? Again, uh, probably imitates an egg quite well. Um, but that's what we're hoping the fish are sort of keying on and that hook will be hanging back about in here.